Welcome back everyone to go-kart build video number 24 where this is a go-kart build series where I decided to build a go-kart completely from scratch where everything is custom and takes a lot of time. Now um, if it's your first time here welcome to the channel and welcome to the build series. I invite you to go ahead and watch all the previous videos maybe not all of them but some of the main ones um, that'll catch you up on kind of what the go-kart build is about and where I've come from to get to this point in this video. Now in this video I'm going to catch you guys up on a few different things that have been going on with the go-kart um, just like every other video uh, but no but um, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is kind of the idea of maybe adding some bumpers or side skirts once the go-kart's finished and painted and I know it runs okay because um, I've been looking online just to kind of get some ideas of what kind of bumpers to add I don't want to do like a whole full body because that would take a lot of work time and money and I don't really want to invest too much more money into the build at this point because there's already a lot of money invested um, so yeah so basically I just found a few bumpers online and I thought maybe I'd show you guys them on the computer and kind of get an idea of what you guys think and maybe some recommendations you guys have and um, then I'll go from there and kind of play it out. Uh, the thick, second thing I'm going to talk about in this video is the idea of, or not really the idea, the fact that I got new shocks for the rear part of the go-kart. So the two rear tires, I got four new shocks and without going into too much detail right now, I'll go ahead and talk about that later on and the reason why I got new shocks, um, but it was really helpful and I'm really glad I did it. The fourth thing, or third thing, sorry I can't count this morning, third thing I'm going to talk about is this little kind of modification I made to the frame just to kind of make it look a little more sleek and less boxy. Not a big thing to talk about there, just to kind of show you guys. And then the fourth thing I'm going to talk about, it's a big one, is the paint sample. So basically what I'm going to do is take a piece of scrap metal that I have laying around, prep it just like I would if I was painting the go-kart. So that means taking the grinder, putting a sanding wheel on it, sanding it down so it looks all nice and shiny and has that kind of metal finish to it. Um, and then go ahead and going over with the paint that I'm going to use and just kind of see what it looks like um, before I start painting the go-kart and then I think, oh, that doesn't look good. So always a good idea to do a paint sample before you do the entire go-kart itself. And then that way I can get an idea of what it what it will look like and also maybe get some ideas of paint schemes uh, to do with the go-kart. So like adding a few different other colors into the different parts of the go-kart to kind of change up the, the color so it's just not all one color. Um, so that's pretty much what this video is going to consist of. So I'll go ahead and start first by talking about the different bumpers that I might add to the go-kart. Okay, so here's the first kind of um, idea I had for the go-kart body panels. Now these are kind of like shifter cart style body panels and the only trouble with these is um, they're obviously built for a specific, specific type of go-kart. Um, so this is here your front nose piece. Um, this is like the piece that covers the steering column and usually has the number right there. And then these are your two side skirts. So the trouble with this is I would have to kind of custom fit these to the go-kart. Um, just based on the fact that they're not actually meant for them. So as I said, everything's custom, takes a lot of extra time. Um, so I speak some truth there. So basically I've just been, uh, so this is CometCartSales.com and I was just kind of browsing through their, um, through their selection here. This is one kit that I really like the look of the front nose piece a lot. I think it looks really aggressive and it looks really good. This front nose piece right here, I love the kind of angled shape I think it looks really cool. Um, so then, yet again, comes with the same four pieces. The front piece covers the steering column and the two side skirts. So, I don't know, I'm gonna have to kind of play around with this and just kind of get an idea of what I wanna do for this. As you can see, it is not cheap by any means, $300 for a set. So that might be a reason for me to go to some of the local carting places and see if they have any old body panels that are kind of wrecked and you know they don't need anymore and I could just try and fix them up and use them so here's kind of another kit just kind of same idea it's got four pieces um, and also has that kind of angled front nose piece so I think that looks really cool that's kind of like my favorite look for the other nose piece so yeah that's pretty much it um, in terms of this site 
Now this website is BMI Cart and Supplies and I went on here and saw that they kind of have the more full body style or full body panel um, cut type kits. Uh, now the only problem with this is like I said mine's completely custom so this is designed for a specific cart so this one's a G-Man Junior cart body. Um, so I don't know how well that would fit or if it would even fit at all just because my go-kart is a lot wider than a standard shifter cart and it's a lot longer I believe and especially since this is a junior cart I'd have to find another um, full-size cart um, but yeah so I mean this is just kind of an idea that I got in my head um, the designs I like the most and I think the design that's most practical are the ones that are on um, Comet cart sales just because uh, they're not full kits, so they're going to be a little bit more easy to install and or modify to fit around my go-kart specifically. So let me go back to those real quick. Let's see where are the bodywork. Here we go. Okay, so I mean they have all different types of um, all different types of uh, pieces here. You can buy full kits or you can buy um, pieces individually. Wow, those are expensive. Um, so these are rear bumpers. 100 bucks on average so maybe a little more than 100 bucks uh, let's see what else I got uh, side pods and panels so these are like the side skirts so those aren't too bad pricing wise it's the rear bumper and the front bumper that really gets expensive like holy moly body so let's just go back to the bodywork kits yeah, so I mean these are this is the kind of design that I'm leaning towards um, in terms of you know doing a side skirt and front bumper and um, the thing over the um, steering column. But it's just kind of tough because I don't really know the sizing of these and I don't know how it's going to fit with my go kart. So my ideal um, situation would be to go to a local cart place that has you know leftover pieces that might have cracks in them or are slightly broken and just modify those to fit my go-kart so that would be my ideal situation but I just want to show you guys this and kind of show you guys that I've been thinking about this and maybe get some ideas flow flowing through your heads and also I'm gonna be thinking about this and try and figure out the best possible way to go in terms of body parts on the go-kart alright so the next thing I'm gonna talk about on the go-kart here is the fact that I got new rear shocks for the rear tires here so as you can see, there's two shocks just kind of sitting on the ground here. These are the old shocks because I went ahead and just kind of mocked up the new ones. So the reason why some of you may ask, why did you spend another $85 on new shocks? Well, it's because when I, so this was the biggest design flaw probably of the entire go-kart. Um, maybe not the biggest, but one of the biggest, um, was the fact that I didn't account for sag in the suspension, i.e. I didn't preload the suspension when it was in the air instead of um, the suspension. So if this is the go-kart where my knuckles are, um, the suspension was flat in the air and it should have been like this. So then when you put load or weight on it, it kind of evened out went like that so instead of doing that I did this and then when you put weight on it it went like that and the suspension sagged and so that was part of the reason why the sprocket on the go-kart was actually hitting the ground as I was driving it because you're gonna get some flex as you go over bumps and stuff so it's gonna wanna you know go even lower than its neutral position so basically what I did was I just took the shocks off and I thought okay well you know this is just a simple simple geometry here so Put the put the suspension arm in the position that I would want it, and so as you can see right now, it's semi um, angled down, and it looks it's more evident when you look at it from afar. So you can see it good now. Um, it's got that angle to it, and it also kind of adds some positive camber. I.e., I didn't really want that, but it's the best thing to do it in terms of functionality so basically these shocks I'll compare them next to each other <clears throat> these shocks are uh, six or no five and three uh, I can't remember exactly the new ones are six and a half inches long and these ones I think are like five and three quarters so they're slightly longer not too much longer but they're just long enough to make 
the suspension preloaded. And as you can see now, the back is actually raised up higher than the front, which is cool because it not only makes it more functional, because there'll be more clearance in the back there, but also kind of gives it a gives the go-kart a race kind of rake to look like dragsters or other kind of cars have. So that was a big um, stepping point for the go-kart and adding those. These shocks are, they're a little bit, um, they're not as stiff as the other ones, but they're still plenty strong enough to hold the weight and all the forces that will be on this. So now, when I add the sprocket here, there will be plenty of clearance, especially since I'm going with an even smaller sprocket. So with the amount of clearance I have now, I could probably even go with the old sprocket I have and still have room. But since I got the torque converter, which is almost installed, um, still have to tighten up a few things and also, uh, and also, um, uh, just kind of tighten up a few things and troubleshoot a, f a few different pieces. That was one point I wanted to ask. So for those that have this torque converter from Go Power Sports, um, what is this piece? This is like a little, no it's not in focus, but this is like a little copper loop and it's not very clear on the directions where to go. And from my understanding, it's supposed to go here um, underneath the belt, but I'm not really sure. So any of you that have this torque converter and you could tell me where this like copper sleeve goes, that would be fantastic because I'm trying to figure out where it does go. Um, but yeah, so yeah, that's pretty much why I got new shocks. Um, yeah, like I said, it was another 85 bucks, but uh, it's I got them off eBay, so. Um, but it worked out nicely. I'm really happy with how the stance of the go-kart is now versus how it was before. I didn't like how it sagged before. I just thought it kind of looked broken and now it kind of looks professional. It looks even more mean with this kind of raked look to it. So that is the second thing I'll be talking about and then I'll follow up with the third thing now. So the third thing I want to talk about is just a little modification I made to the frame here. And as you can see, um, this part used to be square here, so this used to be a squared end, so it went beep, beep, like that, or beep, beep, like that. So what I did was, I want to kind of get rid of that, because it made the go-kart look really boxy, and, um, if I could take any pieces to make it less boxy, I wanted to do that, so, basically I just took the angle grinder, or I took a ruler, drew a straight line, following the line from this piece, took a straight line and drew it right back and then just took my really thin cutting wheel on the angle grinder and just cut right off. And then what I did was is I took some uh, in one inch flat stock because I didn't want to leave this part open. So I took some one inch flat stock and welded it to this piece. Obviously I'm going to clean this up a lot and make it look a lot better. Um, it's actually not even welded on the bottom because I didn't want to have to flip the go-kart over with everything on it. So I'll just do that. Um, while I'm in the process of prepping it for paint. So that's kind of one little um, thing that I thought of that I should do. And so I'm kind of glad I just did that. I think it makes it look a lot better and look a, l a lot less boxy if you look at it from this angle. And so that was kind of a nice piece. It took me about an hour to do both sides just to make sure everything was lined up. And because one big thing I wanted to do was um, I didn't want this one inch, because this uh, flat stock is about a quarter inch thick, so I didn't want this flat stock to stick farther, too much farther out than this piece, so I had kind of had to grind and grind and grind until this flat stock sat almost flush with this uh, uh, piece, this strut brace over there. So that is the third thing I'm going to talk about, and now I'm going to move on to the last um, part of this video where I'm going to be applying a paint sample to see what it looks like. Okay, so what I got here is the angle grinder with a sanding disc on it. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and take this piece of scrap metal. This piece of scrap metal was basically the first piece I ever welded together. So I thought, you know, what the heck, why not just uh, apply some paint to it and make it look nice. Um, so basically what I'm going to be doing when I prep the go-kart is um, well, I'll first grind down any um, big welds that I want to grind down. So 
um, basically that's you know the piece that I showed you that I added on there's a lot of slag and extra crap on there that I want to grind off and make it look nice so then any rough edges I'm going to be using a wire brush um, to to kind of uh, make those less rough and kind of get the rough edges off. And then the last part of prepping it will be to use this sanding disc on here to give the metal a certain pattern and also to get any surface rust off. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and prep this piece uh, just like I would if I um, finished with the grinder wheel and the wire brush. Um, don't recommend doing this with flip flops, but I'm gonna do it anyways. Um, so. Here, you just uh, take the grinder wheel and then I'm just going to kind of apply a certain pattern to it. So I'm just going to do this entire top part and then I'll go ahead and paint that. So as you can see, the grinder gives it a really cool um, like brushed metal look and also it really softens up the surface. It makes it nice and smooth, which is what I want. I want it to be a nice smooth surface. And I think this will also help prep the surface to be painted. Um, so now I'm going to move on to actually painting this and showing you guys what it's going to look like painted. Alright, so the can color I'm going to be using here for this um, for the go-kart is this Duplicolor Metal Cast. Um, paint and basically this paint is high gloss it's heat resistant durable and it kind of gives a um, replicated anodized paint finish look now if you don't know what anodized paint is uh, I recommend just go uh, Google searching an idea to get an idea of what um, they mean by anodized so basically that's just what it says on the can here um, base you have to get this from an auto parts store I got this from I believe it was O'Reilly's they don't carry this at Home Depot and I'm not sure about Lowe's but I'm pretty sure this is mainly for automotive type stuff so um, it gives a really cool blue uh, paint finish so you can see by the cap that they have on the the can so it kind of gives this really cool blue paint finish so basically I'm just gonna apply it to this piece and kind of get an idea of what it's gonna look like so apply in very light coats um, uh, just to kind of get a first coat down and also make sure you remove any items nearby that you don't want to get paint on so I backed my car out of the garage so there's no chance for getting overspray on it so let's go All right, so I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit and then um, I'll apply another coat. Okay, so I'll let this dry for about five minutes. The cool stuff about this paint is um, it dries relatively fast. I mean, I'm I'm uh, wiping my finger, you know, pretty firmly across this piece and there's, it's, you know, it's not coming off on my finger whatsoever. So um, that could be a huge uh, aspect or a benefit of using this paint. Um, it, it was kind of interesting when I applied it just now it didn't seem like it was it was adhering to the metal that well I don't know if it was because it the met, uh, the paint needs a little bit more of a rough finish rather than a smooth finish to uh, to adhere better and that sanding disc um, it gives it a pretty smooth finish so I don't know maybe that's uh, something off to look into 
um, and how to prep it differently, but I think it's going on okay for the most part. I mean, it's looking pretty cool, so we'll go ahead and throw on a second coat now. And uh, one thing that I've learned over the years with spray paint is you want to be very ginger with your uh, um, with your applications and how much you're applying at one time. You don't want to apply too much at one time or else you're going to get bubbles and drips. You just want to be very light with your coats and not also have a good spray uh, distance away. So I usually do about six to eight inches away from the piece and that'll allow to make sure that you're not going to get any um, spots that are going to bubble up or uh, pieces that like gum up with extra paint. So. Yeah, just be very uh, ginger with your um, applications. I don't really know how else to describe it, but um, so yeah. So I just applied the second coat, so I'm just gonna let that dry for a little while and then I'll apply another coat. I'm just trying to see how many coats um, that I might wanna use um, to get the color that I want. So obviously the more coats you use, the darker the color is going to be. So I don't want it to be too light, but I also don't want it to be too dark. So that's where I'm just trying to trying to experiment a little bit with uh, this piece right now. Okay, so I let that dry for about another five minutes or so. So um, just uh, I double checked just to make sure, and it's it's pretty much dry. I mean, I'm wiping my finger across it again. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and apply a third coat, and see how it looks. I really like this color. I think three coats is the magic number. Um, maybe four, but three looks really good. I like it a lot. Oh, what the heck. I'll let it dry and then apply a fourth coat just to see what it looks like, but I think three is pretty good. Okay, so let that part dry, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a fourth coat just to see what it looks like. I'll do a very light coat here, but. Mmm. That looks good, I like it. So I'm gonna wait for that to dry and then I'll show you guys real quick. Uh, what it looks like up close before I wrap up the video. All right, so quickly here before my camera battery dies, uh, this is the up close look of the painted piece. Now obviously I didn't spend a whole lot of time prepping this, but um, I think it came out pretty cool. I really like the look of this paint, um, especially with the kind of brushed metal look that I'm going for. So um, yeah, I mean, before, after, before, after so pretty cool all right everyone oh god almost fell so uh, that's gonna do it for this go-kart build video um, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, being caught up with the different pieces and parts that are going on with the go-kart right now um, basically for the next part I'm gonna be uh, I think just uh, finishing up the last welds and then doing another test drive uh, to make sure everything works right. Uh, also, I gotta cut the chain length, uh, so that's what I'm gonna be doing next. Um, but, and then once I make sure that it runs and drives okay, start that starts the disassembly process and the prep process to uh, paint this thing and finish it up. So, I hope you guys like the look of this color. Um, let me know what you think um, in terms of maybe some different paint schemes like blue here, maybe a little black there, silver. I really, the colors I wanna stick with are blue, black, and silver, not really much else. So maybe if you, you know, say, oh, we'll paint the steering column black and do this black or this silver and this blue, the main frame is gonna be blue and then everything else will be either black or silver. So let me know what you guys think. As always, if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them in the section below and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Otherwise, thank you all very much for watching. I hope, I hope you all have a great day and I will see you in the next Go-Kart Build video.